Good afternoon and welcome to the inaugural episode of my new show, Getting to the Heart of the Matter. I am Dr. Tony Luck and I am so grateful and honored that you have decided wherever you are in the world to take some time during your day to join me. Over the years, I have been blessed to share time with you on television, radio, and print, and your responses and reactions have so inspired me at 70 years old to come to this very moment. I want to sincerely thank the Galaxy, Galaxy Universal Network leadership, producers, and all the teams for allowing me this great opportunity to share this time with you. I want to thank my own diligent staff that are always around. Getting to the heart of the matter has been germinating for at least two decades. And in 2010, with the amazing support of the Amway Company, we were able to create and develop a show with a pilot. That pilot has provided the foundation for what we're going to be engaged in in each week. My passion and personal goal is to see actual transformation in Africa for all Africans, whether they're in the country, in the continent, or out. To be able to engage Africa's vast and vital diaspora to assist in her growth and development, to give a voice to hope, to bring light into the darkness many of us are feeling, to create a pathway for new ways of thinking and being. I concur with the 16th century astronomer Galileo, who said these immortal words, I do not believe or feel obliged to believe that the God who has endowed us with sense, intellect, and reason intended for us to forego their use. I am so very excited to be to be, I don't know, hosting this new adventure. See, I'm acting like a kid. And I'm hoping that during this time, you will be informed, inspired, transformed, and empowered to use those great tools of reason, sense, and intellect, and the inherent power that each of us have to, to make change, lasting and long-lasting change for well-being and to make our powerful growth, transformation, that is so necessary for our destiny now. I am looking for this time with you as we need an inspired awakening of the minds that will allow us to really change the circumstances that we are in to affect a different way for our life to be and to improve our lives, the lives of our family, the lives of our communities, our nations, and our world. I believe that the best way to start this adventure together is by laying out the pathway for what I hope will be an exciting time that we will spend each week for an hour with all the discussions that are taking place about the state of the world on television, on radio, on social media, Many of you may ask, why this show? Why now? What is my purpose? What is my intention? And what is the reason for my asking you to spend your precious time with me each week? Well, firstly, with all the changes and the challenges in the world today, from climate issues to environmental issues to food security issues brought on by GMOs that have contributed to some health challenges that we face, and terminator seeds that create rising agricultural costs, to famine, to war, to pandemics, to racism, to sexism, to abuse of women, children, the anger we feel, the pain we feel, and the suffering of our veterans. I'm telling you, we have a lot to do, which has caused us so much despair and too many sleepless nights and way too many worrisome days. I have found in many of these matters that the best way out of a situation is through it. And through it by having truth, by having honor, by facing it straight up. And so that's what we're gonna be doing. Secondly, why this show? Well, with all that is confronting us today, now more than ever, we must not be afraid to change our directions, our thoughts, our ideas, to craft a better world. 
I believe there is no better time than now for direct engagement with the crafting of workable solutions, solutions for the issues that are confronting us, such as provision of clean water. We can do that. The development of affordable housing, the provision of good health care, the allowance of girl childhood education, the creation of infrastructures that will empower economic development, the provision of jobs for our young people so that so, so, so many problems and so many issues that affect our lives today and the future lives of our unborn generations of tomorrow. This year of 2020 was symbolic of 2020 eyesight, which is perfect vision. And boy, how much we need that now with the surprising challenges that we have been dealt with and we confront. Now we must take the opportunity to see clearly what has to change as we create environments that allow us to thrive. Within the context of our show, we seek to awaken the sense of hope and African pride for the future. And we consider the present state of affairs and the many issues that confront us, even those which many of us seem to deny even exist. I hope that through this small effort, we can tackle the myriad of, of matters that really concern and affect us all. And in so doing, inspire rejuvenation, inspire the innate sense of self-preservation and the desire for well-being as we create positive and sustainable actions. While they'll be talking on getting to the heart of the matter, this is not a talking show. This is a thinking show. This is a solution show. This is a show that's going to provide solutions to create our best and most productive lives. Because only when we begin thinking are we closer to who we really are. And when that amazing activity happens, transformation happens, solutions flow, change occurs, and lives are lived in harmony and in peace. Instead of waiting for those people that we call they to come around and fix things for us, we can take matters into our own hands. And so, an hour each week, you and I will be engaging in this open space where we can actually stop, take a deep breath, and think through the, the Herculean issues we are facing and begin crafting creative solutions for the benefit of Africa and her people. As I travel throughout Africa and beyond its borders, teaching, counseling, sharing, engaging in transformational development, I've come into contact with people on both the gr grassroots level and the high levels. As a result, I discovered a common thread, a pattern that runs across all races, tribes, genders, ages, and cultures. And that is, without a doubt, the ma that major problems will and do exist in a society when matters of importance to individuals gets swept under the carpet, ignored. This causes disengagement. It causes disenchantment by the citizens who are engulfed by a sense of powerlessness, hopelessness, and despair. For most of us, we are not used to being directly involved in solving problems, even our own. So this activity will be new to many of us, but I hope it will be exciting as well. Imagine for a moment being empowered with the knowledge that we always have the precious gift of making a choice. And that revelation begins with taking responsibility for where we are and how we got to where we are, which I agree is often very difficult. But upon closer inspection, it is actually empowering. Because if we understand things and how they got broken, guess what? We have more understanding and the power as to how to fix them. The value of engaged citizens 
most notably the disenfranchised, through conversation and dialogue can never be overestimated. In fact, it is a critical, important tool in the honest and authentic development of our societies. This is where I hope our conversations will take us. At getting to the heart of the matter, we see ourselves as one small way of reaching that untapped, vital, energetic resource called we the people, the citizens of our world who have hopes and dreams and thoughts and ideas and concepts and yes, solutions. We are going to take a short break right now so that we can catch up and pay the bills and I'll be right back. With 168 hours in a week, I hope you will share one of them with me, Dr. Tony Luck, every Wednesday from 3.30 to 4.30 as we get to the heart of the matter. With the many, many issues that are confronting our world today, I am convinced that together we can craft amazing solutions, not only that will transform our lives, but the lives of our children, the lives of our families, the lives of our communities, the lives of our nations, our world, our environment. So every Wednesday, I will be on Galaxy Universal Network, StarSat Channel 500, so that we can have this exciting discussion. And I'm looking so forward to you joining me. So we're going to really get to the heart of the matter. May God bless you. Make massive moves. So from the theater stage to the kitchen. I'm anxiously awaiting to see Sanaya. What? What else is this if not love? Make massive moves with Starsight. Massive moves. The space race has already started. Russia had got the first object in space. The coast is as wild today as it was when Europeans settled the continent. Enormous beasts with enormous thirst. The teams are primed and ready. They got the first animal in space and they got the first person. Time to see what the boys can do. Make massive moves with Starsight. Make massive moves. Isn't that your uh, daughter's bib? But the truth is, I feel like Arabella's always with me. Don't you ever forget this man's face. He killed your brother. Make massive moves with Starsight. Welcome back. I almost feel like I'm on a TV set. <laughs> Getting to the heart of the matter, we'll be tapping into the untapped sleeping giant of the massive genius that resides within the African spirit. For far too long, that, that genius has been eroded over centuries of abuse and neglect. It would seem that our beloved Africa has forgotten our mother's and our grandmother's wisdom and mother wit. We have forgotten the insights and intelligence of our grandmothers and grandfathers. We unfortunately, for far too many of us, have become confused about our identities and have forgotten our passion and our position in the world as Africans. We are the ones from whom the beginning of the world has been developed. We have been the ones who have provided solutions, innovations, concepts of mathematics, science, agriculture, astrological understanding, economic development, family security and stability, leadership, strategic oversight, and spiritual direction to the entire world. 
but now for far too many of us because we have been given someone else's mind which we have uh, thought was better than ours someone else's water we think is wetter than ours someone else's ice we think is colder than ours we have all too often been rendered helpless passive and compliant we must now awaken our spirits which reminds me of an amazing Native American parable a grandfather was teaching his grandson about the power of the internal spirit within each of us. The story is about two spirit wolves that live inside of us, one noble and one evil. After describing the attributes of both the wolves, the grandson asks his grandfather, so which one rules? And the grandfather said, the one you feed. Let that resonate with you, the one we feed. So getting to the heart of the matter is going to inspire us to feed our most noble spirit wolf, our best self, our highest self, the self that was designed in the beginning to harbor honor, virtue, and love, the self we were before we became independent from the source of our very being. It is my desire that uh, getting to the heart of the matter experience will be triumphant and transformative, measured by our ability to gather, to engage the emotional, sensitive, cognitive core of our very being. being. And all who are inspired and touched by the discussions we will have, we know what the problems of the day are. We are seeing them. We are feeling them. We are experiencing them and we are suffering from them. We see the disparity between the rich and the poor. We are confronted and confused by the reality that less than 1% of the world's wealth is, contr is, is controlled by this 1% and they own 95% of the stuff. That greed and avarice and power-hungry, dysfunctional people seem to run everything. For too many of us have suffered trauma in our homes, at our workplaces, in our communities, even on social media. We have, we hope that, I hope that by getting to the heart of the matter, we can begin to help ourselves and each other to heal as we create solutions and embark on the monumental task of change. It is true that in working on solutions, we will have to sometimes confront the trauma, the pain, the uncertainty that we have faced. But we have each other. We will have the heart to, to be able to reach out and listen to each other and plow through to a viable, workable, and sustainable solution that will heal us, encourage us, and transform us. I am so sure we are a creative, enterprising, intuitive, soulful, warm, and intelligent people. And we have an amazing African proverb that inspires us. If you want to go fast, go alone. But if you want to go far, go together. So each week on Getting to the Heart of the Matter, together we will unpack critical ideas, situations, and circumstances that concern Africa, her people, and the world. I don't want you to think that for one minute that I think we can solve these complicated, difficult issues in an hour. I don't. But we can start. And if necessary, like a recurring series that whets your appetite to come back next week, we could be with one topic for more than one show. We're not in a rush. The things are too deep. We need to solve them. So we can deliberate and thoroughly consider all of the aspects and the backstories and the intentions of why we are where we are 
until we feel we have hit on, you know, a real possible solution which can be actualized on an individual as well as a collective basis. Getting to the heart of the matter is going to push us to drop many of our preconceived notions and attitudes. We are going to be pushed to get rid of debilitating habits. Getting to the heart of the matter is going to push us to get rid of the many concepts that have really been holding us back from actually solving the problems that confront us. And as we release and relinquish these limiting beliefs, we will find new directions, new energy, new vision by allowing the winds of change to take us into the noblest directions for the grandest life for ourselves, our children, our families, our communities, our nation, and our world. You know, as I was thinking about this, getting to the heart of the matter will be like riding in a hot air balloon, which I do recommend that everybody try. The, the, the idea, the, the actualization of that wonder, wondrous and wonderful activity is not just about seeing far above the earth, beholding the breath, breathtaking beauty of the trees, the lakes, the flowing rivers and the streams, the amazing, amazing towns and cities, allowing us to fly high with the eagles, almost touching the clouds and the stars, which in itself is exhilarating and liberating, but it's also about the amazing, incredible wind. If while riding in a hot air balloon, you want to change direction, you have to steer into a different lane of wind. You have to go either higher or lower, and by so doing, you get the opportunity to change direction, especially if you find that the independent wind has thrown you off course. I've learned that from that reality that sometimes we have to get out of one lane and get into another, and that in another wind lane, there is a different and better direction, because fresh winds are always blowing. Hopefully, as we unpack issues each week, some unfortunate and some uncomfortable that will show us that we have been in a lane that will not take us to our most ad advantageous destination. We can be inspired to push past ourselves and to be elevated by allowing the winds of change, the opportunity to move us to greater depths understanding and revelation, and higher heights of joy and tranquility. Going deeper into the heart of the matter will allow us to rise into a virtuous new beginning. We have to take a short break, but I'll be right back. With 168 hours in a week, I hope you will share one of them with me, Dr. Tony Luck, every Wednesday from 3.30 to 4.30 as we get to the heart of the matter. With the many, many issues that are confronting our world today, I am convinced that together we can craft amazing solutions, not only that will transform our lives, but the lives of our children, the lives of our families, the lives of our communities, the lives of our nations, our world, our environment. 
So every Wednesday, I will be on Galaxy Universal Network, StarSat Channel 500, so that we can have this exciting discussion. And I'm looking so forward to you joining me. So we're going to really get to the heart of the matter. May God bless you. Make massive moves. So from the theater stage to the kitchen. I'm anxiously awaiting to see Sanaya. What? What else is this if not love? Make massive moves with Starsat. I have these wonderful guys talking in my head. It's wonderful to be an old lady having young men talk into your head. It's so great. I must do this show every day. <laughs> we are back. The intention of getting to the heart of the matter is to inspire us as a people to use our skills, our ideas, our power to begin to solve pressing issues and challenges that faces us all. I know this type of direct action is new to us. We are not used to the type of engagement. We are usually looking for others to solve our challenges. We don't usually think that we have any power to do so. Thus, too often, we look outside ourselves to government. We look to politicians. We look to teachers. We look to preachers. We look to doctors, all of whom are useful. However, we as citizens must now begin to acknowledge that we do have power to make changes in our world, in our governments, in our nations, in our families, in our health care, in our economies, and in ourselves. I want to assure you that power is right within us. During our time together, I hope you will be prepared to digest the honesty and clarity and sometime raw mama tea of new thoughts, new concepts, new vocabulary that you will embrace the concept of your having the power to define, the power to change your perception by changing your language, understanding that the power to define what is happening to us is in our hands. We will also consider in serious concrete terms the impact that our choices and decisions and those of our ancestors have had upon us upon the world around us, upon our present, upon our present circumstances and upon our future and the future of our world. We must recognize, though painful at first, that the world we are living in today has been fashioned from the thoughts, decisions, ideas, words, and actions made by ourselves and others yesterday. One of the reasons that we have such a hard time going back to look at how things started is because it pushes us to confront not so pleasant memories or things that forced us to create an environment that may or may not have produced a positive or conducive reality for goodness and for wellness. But we must, and we must do it now without fear, without blame, without shame, without guilt. And we hope that the things and the times when we are getting to the heart of the matter, that we are able to push this envelope. During our time together, together it is my intention to inspire all of us to find and activate that power within to inspire action, to inspire transformation, no matter what it costs us to do it. For I am certain that only such clear, sustainable, positive, empowering action brings lasting change. I'm hoping that you, who are in more than 40 countries that Galaxy visits each day from around the world, will be inspired to take part with me in the fashioning of solutions to the massive challenges facing us as individuals, as communities, as families, as the nations, as our continent, and the world we see around us. 
And the beauty of this request that I'm making of you is that we can. We acknowledge that a great many things have been done to us by others, but we must ask how much of a part did we play in that reality? How much have we allowed to happen to us? How much have we ignored about what was going on around us? We need this diagnostic to see just how did we get where we are. For me, this is really getting to the heart of the matter. Finding out how did we get here? What have we been doing? How have we been allowing others to do things to us? But by allowing these questions and analysis is why I believe this show, this conversation is so important for the honest and courageous unpacking of the causes will help us to begin to think about the tomorrow we want by alerting us and altering our behavior today. In many instances, it's by asking the right questions that we can forge ahead to the right answers. They're challenging, but they're necessary. Getting to the heart of the matter is truly a reality show. In our intention to contribute to the transformation of Africa and her people, as we consider the challenges which are facing our continent, we see at the heart of many issues is the loss of the golden thread of Ubuntu. That has guided us, Ubuntu has guided us in Africa for eons. Ubuntu, the golden thread of goodness, which connects all life from the lowest creature to the highest. Ubuntu means love, it means truth, peace, happiness, eternal optimism, and inner goodness. Ubuntu is the essence of our human being, the divine spark of goodness inherent within each of us. From the beginning of time, the divine principles of Ubuntu has guided African societies, teaching us how one interacts with other human beings, with nature, and with the Creator. Ubuntu was and rightfully must be the guiding principle of our existence, for we can no longer ignore that without Ubuntu, mankind is enveloped by greed, selfishness, immorality, pride, egotism, arrogance, and other things. Ubuntu bridges the gap between the positive value that we as a people really do hold and our actual day-to-day -day behavior. Thus, in order to have a viable impact of transformation, we must look at the behavior behind our continent's many social, political, economic, and personal challenges. We need to reconsider and reevaluate and analyze our values, especially the ones we hold dearest. As our dearest values really do drive our choices and our behavior. It is our aim to inspire the restoration and the reactivation of the guardians of our true well-being, those incredible African values that allowed us to be our brothers and sisters keepers, which allowed us to care for and nurture our environment, which inspired us to care for and keep safe our elders, our women, our children our families, and in so doing, we will allow the real reactivation of Ubuntu, which will usher in a smooth transition into becoming living examples of what long ago had the moral fibers of our very lives tightly woven together through all the stages of our social development. We intend to encourage and inspire all of us to move from merely believing in these values to actually living them. We must look at how so few people have so much and so many people have so little. How have we allowed that? How have we allowed a billion people to go to bed every day hungry? How have we, having that we, seeing so much abundance allowed 
for poverty to be the order of a day for billions of people? How have we allowed such a travesty of those who have cold hearts and yet we let them lead us? Who has decided that greed is the vehicle and the viable attribute and measure of being worthy? Who told us that having more is a measure of greatness and celebration when others have nothing at all? What does it really mean to have billions of dollars which one can see when one can see deprivation all around? How many cars can we drive? How many houses can we live in? How many, oh God, how much is enough? How much is enough? You know, I love movies, and there's one that I appreciate so much, The Greatest Salesman. It has such great songs, and one of them is Never Enough. So many of us feel that way. If we had all the stars in the heavens, it would not be enough. This, of course, is such a sad, 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 sad indication that we have cold hearts and empty spirits bereft of real life. What can we take with us? I can tell you, as even as a pastor, I've never seen a hearse being pulling a U-Haul truck. When they opened Tutankhamun's grave, he was dead. But the stuff was there. And it was held by the British Museum for many years, and now is in the Valley of the Kings in Egypt. How can those with so much more than anyone can ever spend or use sleep well in luxury while knowing that right outside their door there's someone who's sleeping outdoors many of them who are women and children these are the issues we must face and tackle and getting to the heart of the matter is designed to do just that is this a risky enterprise yes you bet it is but we must get about doing it. I'm not naive to not understand what is at stake. Braver ones than me have tried to wake us up, and they have found themselves thrown under the bus, over a cliff, assassinated, murdered, lied about, marginalized. But I'm galvanized to push forward and hope that this time, this point in time, we are ready for this exercise in freedom in hope and in the life as we know it will be. Because if we don't, we will not survive. Life as we know it will not survive. So I'm gonna take a quick break, get my tea to be a little warmer, and I'll be right, right back. Make massive moves. So from the theater stage to the kitchen, I'm anxiously awaiting to see Sanaya. What? What else is this if not love? Make messy moves with Starset. Make massive moves. The space race has already started. Russia had got the first object into space. The coast is as wild today as it was when Europeans settled the continent. Enormous beasts with enormous thirst. The teens are primed and ready. They got the first animal into space and they got the first person. Time to see what the boys can do. Make massive moves with Starset. Make massive moves. Isn't that your uh, daughter's bib? But the truth is, I feel like Arabella's always with me. Don't you ever forget this man's face. He killed your brother. Please don't shoot! Please don't shoot! Don't shoot! Make massive moves with Starset. Make massive moves. I feel confident. I feel like I can take on the world. So you're telling a story through your clothes. Such a professional, you wouldn't even know. Criticism is one of my biggest motivations. Darling, you want to be a model? Like, oh my god. I'm glistening. The fashion industry needs people with beautiful faces. 
I would pay thousands of dollars for that look. Make messy moves with Starset. Welcome back. We've already been talking for 40 minutes. My goodness, I had so much more to say. I've got to really change my whole script. While in most cases I will be in the studio alone, my wonderful audience, you will be encouraged to engage with me through the many social media patterns and platforms that we have available, including Zoom. Moreover, I'm so excited that at our website, we have an I Think box where you can put your comments, recommendations, solutions, ideas, and innovations. This allows for an inclusive engagement where you assist with your wisdom and your ideas and your concepts to get the best substance and the best sustainable solutions for the highest good after after we have gotten to the meat of the idea and the heart of the matter, to the bottom of the history, to the why of it all. You may reach us on that is an email address, and which I will tell you before we close. Getting to the heart of the matter says we care. It assures us that all is not lost. We express this truth by delving into the issues that are usually ignored, because they're frightening, they're scary, they seem too big to solve. We say that many others before us have tried their very best. They gave their all. Even many of them have given their lives, and yet we are still struggling and trying to, to drain the ocean a teacup at a time. Of course, it is so much easy to put our heads in the sand and allow someone else to deal with the issues, no matter how badly they do it and how unsatisfying the outcome. But I can assure you that without a doubt, that time of passive non-engagement is not my problem, even though I'm living in the problem, has passed. We must get involved at a deep, personal level, learning, listening, understanding, and staying with an issue until we can take a deep breath because we have found a possible solution that we can activate and we can express and create tangible, that we can see tangible results. Getting to the heart of the matter strives to give a voice to the usual voiceless, the unheard voices of the silent voices, people from the grassroots, the youth who are crying out, but no one is listening to them, the elders who feel no one pays attention to them, the women who are weeping with no one to dry their tears, and the men who have been bruised with no one to heal their wounds. This is a critical and necessary activity because I believe the only way, only, what could I, only we can design the solutions together. No longer can solutions only be designed in ivory towers and think tanks in the major capitals of the world or at conferences that most of us cannot afford to attend. I have no doubt that we are the best suited to this activity that we're talking about because we're on the ground. We are in the families that are suffering. We are in the environments where men who used to be called men are now called boys. We are in the, in the communities that are ravaged by violence and poverty. We are in the companies that treat women and minorities with dis disdain and inequality. We are breathing the air and drinking the water that has been polluted by corporate greed and government indifference. We are on the land that has been disseminated by climate change, GMOs, and terminator seeds. We are in nations run by despots who have taken our trust and our love and trampled us in the dirt of despair, poverty, and lack. We are the women and the girls and the boys who are being abused and raped and sold. We are the ones who are suffering from PTSD, from the ravages of war, greed, and avarice. We are the ones. We are the ones who have lost loved ones to preventable diseases. We are the ones who have lost our lands and our opportunity for honest work because of the color of our skin. We are the ones who have had a myriad of diseases invented to kill us, maim us, sterilize us. We are the ones. So therefore, we are the ones that deserve our say, not just at the ballot box, which is great, not just in peaceful demonstrations, also great, not just even in the halls of parliament or corridors of government, but we deserve for all of us 
to, for our voices to be heard directly as we participate in our own healing, our own freedom, and our salvation. We deserve to be the ones creating the future that we want and deserve as human beings. At times of crisis and turbulence, humans have been known to innovate and be creative, solving problems that are facing us and creating solutions which are dealing with the symptoms that we face. There are people all over the world who we must celebrate because they are dealing at every moment with the crisis that is before them, whether combating hunger or dealing with the aftermath of war, caring for refugees or being frontline workers in treating massive diseases and human health issues, many of them man-made, most of them preventable. Those brave souls who are fighting the many wildfires, tending to those who are suffering from the ravages of hurricanes, tornadoes, tsunamis. Those are the ones who are dealing with the elimination of animal species, the, the tearing down the rainforest, the melting glaciers, all events that are too, and too evident for us to continue denying that there's a massive environmental issue, as well as societal issues of homelessness, joblessness, graft, corruption, that starves our societies of funds needed for development, graduates without an opportunity for gainful employment, massive premeditated murders under the guise of freedom for women. We are indeed blessed by those who are brave souls who continue finding ways to fix so many of the symptoms that our world seems to have lost its way, its way of love, its way of peace, its way of compassion, justice, mercy, its Ubuntu. They are our heroic brothers and sisters and they keep us. We acknowledge their intervention in the, the desperate state of affairs of humans. They are so necessary. And we thank God for all those who have given their lives, their time, their talent, their treasure to be responsive to the crisis right on their doorstep. The crisis in families, the crisis in neighborhoods, the crisis in, in communities, in nations. We honor and celebrate at the sacrifice that they deal with on a day-to-day -day basis with solving the symptoms of humanity's unfortunate engagement with the worst side of the human experience. These are our heroes, our amazing points of light. What, what would life be without them? We don't even want to know. And we pray for their continued service to our broken humanity, those who are helping us while appreciating all the work of the symptoms on the symptoms of man's inhumanity to man and the environment, we cannot ignore the fact that there seems to be a lack of real sustainable progress. When I consider that we have been at the business of trying to solve the world's problems for hundreds of years, I'm convinced we still have much work to do. In 2000, the Millennium Development Goals were established. Now, 20 years later, we don't have much success. We don't see much hope. We don't see much fruit. Hundreds of billions of dollars have been allocated and spent to combat hunger, disease, abuse, homelessness, helplessness, refugee crisis, drug abuse, and on and on, with the results that are lackluster at best. The big issues seem not to be able to be overcome. We seem to be going around in circles, and we don't seem to know why. Well, getting to the heart of the matter is designed to find out the whys. It's designed to push the envelope. I'll be right back. With 168 hours in a week, 
I hope you will share one of them with me, Dr. Tony Luck, every Wednesday from 3.30 to 4.30 as we get to the heart of the matter. With the many, many issues that are confronting our world today, I am convinced that together we can craft amazing solutions, not only that will transform our lives, but the lives of our children, the lives of our families, the lives of our communities, the lives of our nations, our world, our environment. So every Wednesday, I will be on Galaxy Universal Network, StarSat Channel 500, so that we can have this exciting discussion. And I'm looking so forward to you joining me. So we're going to really get to the heart of the matter. May God bless you. Make massive moves. So from the theater stage to the kitchen, I'm anxiously awaiting to see Sanaya. What? What else is this if not love? Make massive moves with Starset. Make massive moves. The space race has already started. Russia had got the first object into space. The coast is as wild today as it was when Europeans settled the continent. Enormous beasts with enormous thirst. The teams are primed and ready. They got the first animal into space and they got the first person. Time to see what the boys can do. Make massive moves with Starset. Make massive moves. Isn't that your uh, daughter's bib? But the truth is, I feel like Arabella's always with me. Don't you ever forget this man's face. He killed your brother. Make massive moves with Starset. Well, my darlings, I seem to have written a book that doesn't fit in 52 minutes. So my time is coming to the end. But what I do want to say to you and to us, each week we're going to push the envelope. We're going to pick up the legacy of the men and women who have given their life, a Sankara, a Lumumba, a Malcolm X, a Martin Luther King. They left so much undone. We can. We can fix that. We can pick up their baton and we can run with it. So each week, I hope you will join us. We have a Facebook page just for the I Think box. It's called I Think at Getting to the Heart of the Matter dot online. And you can go there and leave me your comments. You can leave me your considerations. You can tell me you like the way I look or don't. You like what I'm saying or don't. But please become engaged. Next week is our official activity show. And what we're going to be discussing is the difference between being for something or being against something. And that's a very important distinction because when we're for something, it's based on love and we're able to craft solutions. When we're against something, then we're all revved up, but we don't really create opportunities for growth and development. We have had artists and musicians and, and thinkers and doers who have pushed the envelope to, to inspire us, to inspire us to think better. We have had liberators who have liberated us, and yet we are still, in many cases, not free. We've had great minds who have left us footprints in the sand. We have to use them. So I am so grateful for your time today. It seems too short because I could write a book. So maybe I'll put this online and you could read what I was thinking because there are so many people we want to celebrate and thank them for their sacrifice. And we're going to go back as the Akan people in Ghana have left us the Sankofa bird. It's a bird that's moving forward with its head back. It means to go back and get it. 
So we have to go back in some cases and find out how things started because I'm of the mind that things don't end badly. They start badly. So let's go back and see how did we get to a place where greed reigns, where war is the order of the day, where corruption that just sucks out the, the, the benefits of people. We need to find out. So that's what getting to the heart of the matter is going to do. So thank you so much for being with me today. It's the middle of the day in the Central Africa time. It's the morning in America. It's way morning. And I got a call from my very good friend, Lou Gossett. He was behind in the studio calling me to wish me well on my TV debut debut. Thank you for my sisters who are, who are all over the world. And um, thank you for you. So thank you for your time. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your concern about how we'll develop Africa. I wish that the God of creation will make his face to shine on you and give you his peace. I will see you next week. <laughs>